Hello and welcome to North Star Stamper. I'm Sue Creamer. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Oh gosh, I ran upstairs to get some water real quick so I'm out of breath. I need to get in shape. I need to start exercising. Anyway, um, I live in the Twin Cities in central Minnesota on the east side of the cities. Oh, ooh, I need to turn the sound off my tablet. All right, here we go. No, no, that's not working either. Hold on just a minute. Hello and welcome. We'll get started in just a second. Here, I'll give you some pretty cards to look at while I find myself on my tablet. This is not cooperating. Maybe if I go to videos. <laughs> it's being There we go. All right. It says we have some people. Hello, hello, and thank you for joining me. These are the places you can find me. There's a lot of information on my website at northstarstamper.com. You can contact me through there. Um, you can sign up for my newsletter, which is weekly. Um, Stampin' Up! always has something going on. Um, this month, the special is a joining special. You get, I believe it's 65 or $66 extra for free as a thank you from Stampin' Up! And they are all in-color products, um, which are... Uh, five colors that um, cycle through every two years. So um, five colors were just a announced last week, and they'll be with us for two years, and you'll get $65 worth of products in those colors if you join my team during May. I would love to have you join me. All right, but we are doing the floating strips technique. I don't know if you can see on my hydrangea there. You can kind of see the... Sh the um, reflection of the plastic piece that makes those um, strips float. And we get a bonus card. I just happened to die cut this one in the middle, and so I ended up with a second um, card. And let me know if you like the flower, or I'll call this the shadow of the flower, the outline of the flower. Which one do you like best? I asked Andrew, my son, and I like, which one do you like? Um, I wish I had popped up, let me grab my take your picture wall. I wish I had popped up this, this plastic layer with the strips on it. It would be more obvious that it is the strip technique if I, and we'll do that tonight. So, um, I'm curious which one you like better. We'll say the flower or the shadow. Um, but anyway, I'll, maybe I'll tell you later which one I like better. So the trick to this technique is having or using a window sheet. It is after May 3rd, and I can now show you the inside of my catalog. Let me know if you don't have a catalog. I'll get you one in the mail. Um, window sheets are here on page 140. Um, you can uh, purchase these, which are 12 by 12 inches, and you get two window sheets. But that's not actually what I'm using today. I love to reduce, reuse, and recycle. So when you purchase a new photopolymer stamp set... I'm going to put these to the side so you have something pretty to look at. When you purchase a new photopolymer stamp set from Stampin' Up! these days, it comes like this. And I don't know if you can see. Um, oh, goodness, you can see this. Hold on. Let's get that out of the way. Sorry about that. It comes between two acetate sheets. And so I just didn't finish peeling this little stamp, and it goes there. And that's how you're supposed to store them. And then these are, I suppose, trash. We're going to use it today. So one is thinner and one is thicker. We're going to use the thicker one for our piece today. And this is what I used here. I had a large one. I think these are both the same size. I had a large one, and it's bigger than card size, so I actually cut it in half. And that's what I used to create those cards. So let me get my um, pieces out here. Where did they all go? I think, oh goodness. We're using the Hydrangea Haven. The Hydrangea dies, actually. That's the only die I'm using. So if you um, do an internet search on floating strips cards and select images, you will see a lot of cards with this technique, but almost all of them are just circles. Um, I have a tutorial that I will share the link to that I found on Split Coast Stampers. That's not the one I want either. Okay. Um, and it has a picture tutorial 
and a video tutorial, and I will. I think you can get access to both the way I'll send it to you. And that one, they put these strips um, across the whole piece. So they had a piece of acetate, we're gonna call that, I think that's what it is. And they put these strips, they used cardstock, so more like this. You can see I've been doing some cutting. They they put them on the whole strip like this, and that was kind of the background of their card. And I was thinking, why not make a shape out of that? So that's where my thought process went. And so you will see a lot of people have made circles. So they do this same technique like I'm going to do here, and then they just die cut a circle. And I wanted to be different. I don't know, I didn't even think of a circle, to be honest with you. I thought, what big opened open space shape do I have in a die? And I thought of the hydrangea, so that's why I'm using it. So I have a piece of acetate here that is three and a quarter by four and a half. Um, obviously the size really doesn't matter. It depends what you're gonna do with it. I just needed a piece of acetate that was bigger than my hydrangea die. So that's how I ended up with that size piece. All right, one of the things that I wanted to do, and I think I succeeded, was put green strips where the leaves were gonna be, and then purple, in this case, um, strips where the flower was. So I, um, I'll show you how I did that in just a minute. Um, if you can see right here, I think this makes it look kind of modern, which is, this is not my favorite. I do like this one better. Um, there's this strip here across these leaves is so wide, you can't see much of the leaf shape. So the ones I have pre-cut for tonight are thinner, and I think that'll make our hydrangea look better. All right, let's get busy. Let me know if you have questions as I go. As I said, this was a request by Kathy. So I think you're here, Kathy. Kathy, are you here? If not, I will reach out to her. She usually watches. There she is. Hello, Kathy. Um, let me know how I can thank you for this request. My last requester, um, and that was Diane requested sympathy cards that I did a few weeks ago. Um, I gave her a whole bunch of ribbon. I let her choose the colors. She was over here to stamp one day and... I don't know how many yards of ribbon I gave her. So, Kathy Bottrell, let me know how I can thank you for this suggestion. I truly appreciate it. So we're going to use the same colors, and this time I thought we would use mostly cardstock. This one was all designer series paper that I just had scraps of. Were they scraps? I think they were scraps, and I just trimmed them down. And they're like a quarter inch to a half inch are the two sizes I did there. Um... Uh, today, tonight, we're going to use Highland Heather. This is a fresh freesia from the Holman, Holman Beauty. This is in the mini catalog. I forget names. I don't know. This was hand pen. Sorry, that's now retired. I don't think I want to put any of this darker one in there. I think we're going to keep it more pale. And I have some different greens. So we're, I'm going to put these out. I have been doing such a good job with my scraps that I didn't have a lot of scraps to use. I will just show you how I make these strips real quick. Hopefully you can see this. I'll give my... I'm going to cut this end off because it was not straight. So on this... Let me turn it sideways. On this side of my... Um, paper trimmer. I do have markings here as well. So I'm going to go an eighth and quarter inch just to get some very narrow green pieces. This is pear pizzazz. This one that I think I already cut some from is garden green. I think this is garden green as well. All right, I'm going to put that aside for a minute and get some more um, strips here. Uh, well, I should make sure that's long enough. Barely. So I'm going to switch directions, and we're going to go this way. I think I only need a few. Again, this is pear pizzazz. Um, and I do use liquid glue, so we call it the green glue because the cap is green. I should have told you all the things you need. The um, Tombow Mono Liquid Glue, multi-purpose. So that is what we use 
to adhere these strips to our acetate sheet. All right. I got the one I'm picking up. I don't know if we want to mix our colors. I don't know. So many decisions. So an acetate sheet, strips of, I'll just say strips. You could do all white and emboss them. I think that would be very pretty to make a floating strip. Um, I'm going to use a die to cut that out when I'm done. I think that's all you need. The strips, the acetate, and the liquid glue. All right. So to get these, I think we're good to go. I think we are good. I have a whole bunch of strips here. That green one's too wide. Let me... Let me cut a couple more of our garden green. I'm going to go really thin. I think we'll see the shape better with more thinner peat strips. All right. And we're going to get started, and then if I don't have enough, I'll bring my trimmer back out. So I have my grid paper here because that really helped me um, keep my strips straight. So I'm going to actually put my die underneath and put my, I'm hoping you can see this. I really want to keep it straight to me because so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to put some adhesive on a strip. I'm just going to put it in the middle. I'm going to go fairly light handed. Just a thin line. There's another de demonstrator that says if you can see it, that's enough. And I'm going to put this at an angle right at the top of my leaf die there. Or the die where the leaf is going to be. I don't know. If this, words aren't coming to me. You can see how I put it at an angle so that when I die cut it, um, I'll get that shape of that leaf. Okay, so now I can put the die to the side. Now I'm going to use my grid paper to make sure all my strips are in a line or is um, straight. I guess I'll put it that way. So I'm going to put this, I'm going to use this a lot. I'm going to put my um, first strip along this line here. And then actually I am going to add adhesive to my acetate. I'm going to slow and steady wins the race. I am going to use some uh, designer series paper and then I'm just going to lay that right next to it. I'm going to go fairly close, closer than I did on my sample, in hopes that when I die cut my hydrangea with the leaves, you'll see more of the leaves. All right, so let's add some. Is that one long enough? Sure is. Again, I'm going to line it up so I know exactly where my adhesive goes. Sorry for my messy table, but I want you to see what I'm working with. First time around, I did skip a few. Um, I put my adhesive further apart. I'm going to draw that out a little bit, make it thinner. Otherwise, that bulb is going to make a mess. Ah, pick up, pick up. Here we go. I should ask if you have questions. I should look at questions here. Um, all right. Kathy thanked me for doing this, and she'll have to think about a gift. So let me know. We talk pretty often. So Again, I'm going to line up my, my bottom one there and put a very thin line, hopefully. Too much there at the front. I'm hoping you can see exactly what I'm doing. I hope, I hope, I hope. You know what? There's too much glue there. I'm going to use a wire one this time. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. I am mixing up my greens here. This one is soft succulent. One of our returning in colors. Now I'm going to try to get a um, thin green line. All right, you can't really see what I'm doing. I mean, you can see what I'm doing, but I'm going to put my adhesive down as straight as I can. My grid line is help. My grid paper is helping me to helping determine where to put it. I'm going to make sure you can see. Can you see there? 
I don't know why I get nervous for these videos. I've been doing them for, I think, three years now. But I am rather unsteady today. For some reason. All right, I'm going to hold this here with this finger and just lay it on top of the adhesive. My liquid glue. All right, I see I'm going to have a mess here in this corner. But if I do my cards just like these, I can cover it up with my... Um, Highland Heather um, line um, layer there. All right, a couple more. Let me keep going. So, questions. Um, I'm going to put a couple dots because it was coming out too quick. Let's put another one of these. And I am going to do the whole thing because I want to make two cards again. So I'm going to line up my, my lowest um, strip with the, any, any line, really, on the paper, on my grid paper. Uh, yes, Kathy says, I see that the trick is to cut the strips narrow. Yes, I, I think the strips were too wide on my cards here if you watch the video that i will include a link to and kathy maybe i will send that to you privately um so you can look at it tonight or tomorrow um they actually had much wider strips so it depends if you're going to cut a shape i think you do want the strips narrow if you are just going to leave it as a straight background as they do in the video um that's on split coast um you could make them really wide. So it depends what you're doing. So I'm gonna hold that, all right. And then I'm gonna turn this around. So I know that green is where I want the green to be for the leaves. Now we're gonna switch to the purples. This is Fresh Freesia and Highland Heather. Again, I'm gonna line my top, my bottom um, strip with one of these lines. And then I know right where my adhesive goes. I'm gonna go a little more quickly. Sorry, I guess I should have had one of these ready, half done. I'm putting them quite close together. I should have had one of these half done and then you wouldn't have to watch all of it. But I think you get the idea and it just takes a minute. I'm going to try to go very thin here. Let's have a super thin piece of fresh freesia. Such a pretty, delicate color. There we go. I think if I go slow and steady, he wins the race, and then my adhesive is come out. It will take a minute to dry, so we'll talk about the rest of the card. Put another fresh freezer, make sure that's long enough. Slow and steady wins my race, and I get a straighter line. I did not look into hydrangeas again. I know when I bought this bundle, um, I did learn about hydrangeas. I think they do. Um, they do grow in hmm, white and pink as well as purple. I don't remember. I do also have some designer series paper left over from um, when this was a new part of a suite. I decided to use more current product. Let's see what we have here. All right, I'm almost done. And I already have my card pieces cut and ready to go. I've embossed the white layer on the positive card. So this one here, I use a new embossing folder that's the Fern folder. And it's a 3D folder, so the etching is quite deep. Last one. I'm going to put a little extra adhesive there. 
this piece is really long, so I'm just going to tear it because I only need like an inch. All right. So there I have covered my entire acetate with strips. And if you turn it over, you can still see that some of the adhesive has dried and others not. So we're going to set this aside for a minute and let it finish drying. So the pieces I have, this is fresh freesia. When I cut my um, cardstock four and a quarter by 11, I don't get a nice fold if I don't score it. So I'm scoring it five and a half. And our cardstock is getting more expensive. We just had a price increase. So I am trying to save a little bit. So I have actually die cut my um, banner pieces for my two cards from this layer. And next I have, here's the embossing folder, the fern. You can see I already have a layer of basic white in it that I embossed, so that's gonna go there. And only you and I will know that those were cut from there. I also have already cut, excuse me, my basic white and my Highland Heather pieces for the bottom. And I have some bling handy, those are just rhinestones on there. Um, let's see. Let's put this together and let our strips dry a little longer. And let me look for... Oh, the banner pieces are from... I have it here. I know I do. I know I do. It's brand new. Called... It comes with circles, squares, and banners. It is the Stylish Shapes Dies. And I... Um, I, you will see me use this a lot. Um, I think this is like the third time I've used it and I've had it for like three weeks. Um, so many layers there. I think it'd be fun to um, cut layers and oh, just I have so many ideas for that die set. Stylish shapes. And it cuts. Um, here, let me put this down first. Since I don't want to get adhesive everywhere. If you can tell, it cuts, um, there's a dotted edge there and a dotted edge there. So both the positive, I call this the positive and this the negative, have the um, stitched on the edge. So um, if this were for my project, you'd see the itch etched, the stitching, I don't know, dotted edge. I call it dotted edge, so you can see that. All right. And we're going to put some adhesive on this. Can you see the... Let me, I'd like to stand up and see what you see. Look at those ferns. I think it would be really fun to use a, a blending brush and add some definition to those. But they are not the highlight of my card. My hydrangea is. So I'm going to go a little more heavy-handed than I like, than I usually do because it's not flat. And let's think about which way. There we go. Make sure. Oh, I have to turn that over. I've got some adhesive. All right. I will be putting um, something on the inside or a layer, a white layer on the inside. So there's that. Let's stamp on this little one. So these are the two long ones. There were um, shorter ones. So these were the two I used to cut these. All right, um, I am using stamps from the Happiness Abounds, also in the new annual catalog. I'm going to make another friend card. And, oh, I don't have my Highland Heather ink here, I don't think. I thought I was ready. I only have basic gray. It is a photopolymer stamp set, so I'm going to use this. Um, this is from the Stamparatus. You could use your stamp and pierce mat. This is the mat from the Stamparatus. I bought an extra. Being photopolymer, I can see exactly where I'm stamping. You know what? While I have this out, I'm going to stamp my other one, too. We'll just make both of them say friend. I was hoping this had a with sympathy stamp, but it didn't, so a friend will have to 
the earth sentiments. Okay. We're going to set these aside. Now back to our um, strips. I am just going to take my scissors and cut right along the edge of the acetate. You could use your trimmer. Um, I don't know why I don't. I just prefer scissors. Just trimming on the back side. If I were making another one, I could use these long pieces to make another card. I probably will not, and I'll just recycle those. And there is the key to your floating strips. Oh, sorry. As I, um, I think I mentioned, I used only um, designer series paper on these two. Let me clean up a little bit. And oh, how distracting it is when the video gets messy or filled with stuff. Um, so this one is all designer series paper. This one I used a mixture of designer series paper and cardstock. Um, you could use just plain cardstock. You could stamp on your cardstock. You could emboss your cardstock. Um, I remember doing this years and years ago, and we had some really wide ribbon. You could use ribbon on there. So, so many ideas. I would love to see what you create, too. All right, so we need to die cut our hydrangea next. Get this out of the way. Um, I don't have my mini machine set up, so I am going to pull out my big machine. And it probably won't be in... Oops. Because I do want two cards out of this, I'm, I I planned it so that I would have a purple flower and green leaves. I almost had it this way. I'm like, wait, something's wrong. So I'm going to die cut it just like this in the middle of my acetate. We now have a uh, magnetic um, plate available for our die cut and emboss machine. I didn't know it was available when I ordered last week. So I will be placing another order and getting that soon. I am going to go back and forth twice like that um, with all those layers and it's already coming apart. So I'm going to turn it over and make sure that I can see that it did die cut all my pieces and it did. Here's the magic. Let's get this out of the way. I'm curious if anyone else has seen floating strips, um, cards, or I mean, you could probably use this on a scrapbook page. I don't know. Or home decor. Uh, I'd be curious if you've seen this anywhere. Uh oh, it didn't quite cut. Or something is sticking. Hold on, let me. I want to be gentle. There we go. I didn't have this issue this morning when I made the other card. I'm going to take some tiny little scissors. See if I can tell where it's not cut. I think it was just too thick. All right, let's entice it to separate. Come on. Oh. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, what's going on here? Sorry, I have to go off camera for a minute to see what's, see where I need to trim it with these little scissors. There, I think. I guess this die is kind of fine. 
think I got it. There we go. I want to say ta-da, but I'm having trouble here getting this separated. I guess I should have run it through one more time. But it was falling apart when I took it off the plate. Sorry. I know this doesn't make for a good video, does it? <laughs> there we go. I think it is going to be worth the effort. That's the back side. I think that even looks pretty. So there are our two pieces. We're going to finish our cards real quick. And this time, instead, and I, this, I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, that I wish I had... This one is popped up with dimensionals. This one is not. I um, am going to be popping those up with dimensionals. So that is going to go there. And this is the card we're working on. Let me see where this is. Sorry, I was off camera. And where this is going to go. I think we'll put it more in the middle. There. So I'm going to turn it over. I put a bunch of dimensionals. I think I, I keep starting to ask questions and then I don't finish. So I'm curious to know what other shapes you might use to do this. As I said, I saw a lot of circles. Um, I did see one leaf shape. Um, I saw one other shape too. I don't remember what it was. I'm not going to put any worry about putting anything on the bottom of my stem because that's going to be covered with our banner. Let me put a couple more up here. And I'm putting these dimensionals right on the strip so that you won't see the dimensionals through the plastic or um, acetate. If you follow my blog, you'll know that every 25th of the month, I post a Christmas card. This would be a real fun um, technique to use. I was going to say if you have a Christmas tree die, but you could just cut it into a, a triangle and make a Christmas tree with floating strips. Wouldn't that be fun? All right, did I get them all? I did. Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? We're going to put dimensionals on the ends of this. I just have little ones handy, so that's what I'm using. We're going to actually pull that leaf out from behind it. Because there's so many layers and the texture of the um, white and everything, I am just going to put adhesive on here. I don't want to add any more depth to it. I don't think it's getting to be the quarter inch that is the maximum for a first class um, nailing. And there, my friends, is our first card. Let me add a little bling with our uh, take your pick tool. The putty end makes it super quick and easy. I'm going to add a couple more because I can. They say to put things in odd numbers and to put, if you have three, to put them in a triangle. I don't know if I've mentioned that before. Okay, there's one. Let's finish this other card. It only has one layer. At about the right it is oh this is this was the tricky part to be honest with you to get that hydrangea stamped in there because the hydrangea haven stamp set does have a stamp that i could use i can stamp and then die cut with this die to get an image but this time i need to stamp inside there this was a little tricky, so bear with me. Thank you for staying with me. I think we're getting a little longer than I normally like to be. I like to put a um, stamp case under my... Um... Oh, where are we going? Here we are. Sorry. I'm so distracted. I like to put a stamp case under my plate to keep it flat so that when I ink up my stamp, I won't have issues with getting ink on the plate. All right, so I'm lining it up 
about where I'm, I'm going to. So I know where I want this image to be, give or take. All right, so I'm going to take my stamp, and it was about here, right? I think, give or take. And that's just sitting. I will show you what I have here. Hopefully you've seen this before, if you follow me at all. I have created my own stamp positioner. So just on one of these grid sheets, I have taped one of those acetates. So this is the thin side of the acetate. We use the thick acetate for our technique tonight, but this is one of the thin ones. And then I just picked up my stamp like that. We are going to use basic gray. It's a little softer than using the black ink, ink, ink. I'm going to stamp on that plastic plas or S piece of acetate, and then I'm going to make sure that that's where I want it to be on my white sheet. So I am lining up, so if I stamped it like that on the white sheet, my, can you see? Sorry, I think you can see. Oh, let me move over a little bit. If I stamp like that, you can see it's really crooked. So now I need to adjust my white. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this. I see I want to trim, I'm gonna hold these together. So that's where I'm gonna want to stamp. Now I'm gonna place this underneath. Hopefully, and hopefully be within like an eighth of an inch. If it's off a little bit, I don't know. So I'm going to move my stripe sheet and my white together. So I know it looks crooked, and it is on there, but my what I, the important thing is I want the stripes um, in line with the white, and where that's where the stamp is going to go. So now if I move my acetate, I just moved this. I didn't move the white. I'm going to leave the white right where it is. Put these really, really, really strong magnets on my white cardstock. Sorry, I'm going to be off camera. Let me move those. Sorry, you get to watch upside down because I don't have enough room. I'm going to re ink. Ink, 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 ink. And push right on the stamp. Pushing on here isn't going to do anything. I need to push right where the stamp itself is. I that same issue before. There we go. Sorry, that was upside down. It was just easier for me. Get my, put my ink away. Now, when I line up this on my flower, it lines up perfectly. Look at that. I will use a small piece of chamois to clean both my stamp and this acetate piece that I use to line up. So that is how I use my um, Stamparatus as a stamp positioner. I have that extra piece of acetate taped to a piece of grid paper. So now I can use, it's not perfect. I like the way it lines up, but you can see I'm not quite straight and even all the way around. So I'm going to get my trimmer, and this is exactly what I did earlier. I think if I had not stamped that, I mean it's a pretty flower and all, but I think stamping in the middle of my, where I die cut, it really, it, it adds a lot to it. So if you just have a circle or something, you may not need to go through all this with the Stamparatus and whatnot. Um, but I think adding that stamped image in the middle there made a big difference in my card. So I'm going to line this up so it's straight. And now this is going to be a little crooked. But if I line it up here, I think we'll be fine. And I'm going to line check it every step of the way. That's good enough. Unless I send it to one of you, you may not even notice it's crooked. Alright, and here are these, and I think we're done. I'm going to line this up 
line this up and see how we did. I'm gonna sh I'll show you. I'll show you. There. Isn't that pretty? I like it. Kathy, thank you for the suggestion. I love taking requests. All right, let's make sure our adhesive goes where we want it. And then I don't put this on upside down. I've been known to do that. I'm just going to center it. And I'm going to add a whole bunch. You can see it's dry. Not perfectly dry. There's a little bit still wet there, but dry enough. So any other requests? I would love to show you what you want to see. This was fun. I really enjoyed it. I'm going to put a lot around the edge of this flower to keep it popped up. I imagine this one will be mailed. I've actually seen people pick up these mini dimensionals with their take your pick tool. Which I thought was interesting. There was something else I saw. Somebody picked up these dimensionals with something else. Mm, it wasn't the tip of their scissors. I don't remember. It was I've been watching other people's videos lately. Uh, do I need more? I think at the end of this leaf. So the quarter inch is big enough to hide our dimensionals. And it's going to be on white, so you probably wouldn't see it very much anyway, even if it wasn't. So I put a lot of dimensionals right here along the inside. I wish I could put them here and here. I could probably fit one in the middle there. But that is that middle piece is way too tiny. All right, now to get all these liners off, try to collect them in my hand. We'll add our last pieces. I would love to see anything you create with this. My um, inspiration in my newsletter this week is going to be another one of these cards. I haven't made it yet, so um, if you're interested in seeing more inspiration, sign up for my newsletter. I do send out, them out weekly. I was going monthly, but Stampin' Up! gives us so much information, and we have specials that will pop up at the last minute, and I just had to send out more um, newsletters than monthly, so... I just decided to go with weekly. I think I have all the liners off. Sorry, I'm going to stand up so you, I can see what I'm doing. Centering it on the flower. Oh, look at that. Pretty, pretty, pretty. If I do say so myself, there's that. There's already a layer of dimensionals under there, so I am just going to use liquid glue. Do I even need the purple? Hold on. Should I just put friend? I think I'm just going to leave this off. I think that's too much and it hides it. Huh. Change, change of design. Little bit of liquid glue. I think we'll just put it there. That will take a little bit to dry because it's, no, actually it's on the cardstock. And some bling. With my take your pick tool. Actually, I just had one little piece there on the other one. Thank you for joining me. Happy stamping. Here are our cards. And then here were my samples. What do you think? I think they're beautiful. It'd be fun to play with colors and shapes and texture and, oh my gosh, so many ideas. All right, let me see if you have any. Thank you, thank you. Kathy agreed I didn't need this purple piece underneath. Ah, all right, Kathy, I want to see what you do. You don't have to send me pictures. Just tell me what shapes you use. Um... Uh, all right. Ann said it's okay that I have issues, the same issues that you do. Uh, all right. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. All right. There was a question about the banner pieces. I think I answered that. Um, I 
Ann says she was going to try a tape runner uh, um, or she'll have a huge mess. The more I've used this, this the um, more gentle I am. I have another brand. You know, my husband retired from 3M, so I do have some Scotch brand. And I am very messy with the Scotch brand. I don't know if the nozzle is wider in that one or it's the thickness of the adhesive. I don't know. But this one, I do get better control. Maybe the shape and size of the bottle. The other one is a bigger bottle. Um, so, and that's a suggestion. If you are going to use a tape runner, obviously you're going to have to have at least quarter inch um, or half inch pieces unless you have a narrow tape runner. So you may have to play around with the width of your strips and the width of your tape runner if you have to do that. Um, because my leaves were kind of intricate is why I chose to go smaller with my strips. If, it, if I were just making strips on the background, then you could go wider than that even. You could go inch wide or whatever. Okay, anything else? All right. So yes, the key to keep them, keep them narrow if you have an intricate design, I guess that's what I'm saying. All right, I think we're good. Uh, somebody mentioned the glue. I ordered the new glue from Stampin' Up! Has very fine nozzle that you seal up with a straight pin. Kathy, I tried that adhesive and it is, the adhesive itself is very runny and so I haven't replaced it myself. So I'd be curious to know how you do with that. I am, I have learned to be gentle with this so I, I use that. It's a personal preference. So thank you for joining me. Happy stamping. Um, next week, I'm sure I'll be using some new products. My uh, first order from the annual catalog should be here on Friday. So happy stamping. Take care. Thanks for joining me. Bye.